Ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking. Today on your flight, we will journey through the FBI's uh, greatest unsolved mystery in American history. Now fasten your parachute and prepare to jump, scare the drop zone, analyze evidence, and convict suspects of the mysterious B.B. <coughs> Cooper. On November 24th, 1971, a man carrying a black briefcase bought a ticket on flight 305 from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington. On the ticket, he wrote his name to be Dan Cooper. Boarding the flight, he went onto the last row, and during the flight, he handed a note to flight attendant Flo Schaffner. Thinking that the note was a phone number, she stuffed it into her pocket. He stopped her and said, Miss, you better look at that note. I have a bomb. With his demands, he sat next to her. With the note, he wrote, Miss, I have a bomb in my briefcase. I want you to sit by me and write down everything I tell you to. He opened his briefcase and it had eight sticks of dynamite with wires and a large battery attached to it. She wrote down his demands of $200,000 and four parachutes. The captain notified the Federal Bureau of Investigation and they recovered the money from Seattle First National Bank. Another demand that he made, he wanted to land in Mexico City, Mexico, but the pilot had to convince him that a, uh, a one-way trip to Mexico City was not possible and they ended up agreeing on Reno, Nevada. Around 8 p.m., a uh, warning light was in the cockpit indicating that the aft staircase had been deployed. Around 11.02, landing in Reno, Nevada, the captain searched the cabin and Cooper was nowhere to be found. Now let's go through the evidence and theories of D.B. Cooper. Eight cigarette butts, hair samples, and his tie was found on the plane, though the police found no DNA matches in their database. A theory is that D.B. Cooper did not survive the fall. A quote from Larry Carr, who, who led the investigative team from 2006 to 2009, said, no experienced parachutist would have jumped in the pitch black night, in the rain, with the 172 mile per hour wind, wearing lo loafers and a trench coat. His um, apparent unfamiliarity, unfamiliarity with parachutes, the wooden terrain into which he jumped, and the weather <coughs> on the night proved that Cooper was not an experienced parachutist. He then grabbed a, the, or the only two parachutes that were missing from the flight were the military chute that was old and was from 1942 and the parachute that was sewn shut. Oh. No, though we might have been all fooled and Cooper might have been a genius, he might have taken the p military chute because he was familiar with it, might have indicating that he was in the military and a paratrooper and he might have took the sewn shut bag to uh, secure the stacks of money. Now let's move on to the suspects. Richard McCoy Jr. He was an army veteran, skydiver and demolition expert, and hijacked a Boeing 727, the same plane that Cooper had hijacked, demanded four parachutes and $500,000. However, he was 29 years old shorter than the descriptions of Cooper, had green eyes while Cooper had brown eyes, and had multiple reports of being seen in Las Vegas on the day of the Cooper hijacking, indicating that he was a copycat. Robert Rackstra. He was a retired Vietnam helicopter pilot and par paratrooper. He had explosive possessions, was an ex-convict, and he made a confession that he was D.B. Cooper. Though the note was a stunt made by Rackstraw for public attention, he was 28 years old, shorter than the descriptions of Cooper, and the flight attendants said that they saw no resemblance. Kenny Christensen. He was a trained paratrooper and a mechanic for Boeing. This, you might ask why this was important information. Well, the tie was extracted and in 2017, UV light was shined on it and found traces of pure titanium, which is a, was a very rare earth metal in 1971 indicating that D.B. Cooper might have been a mechanic like Kenny Christensen. And the last suspect was Dwayne Weber. He was a World War II Army veteran, chain smoked, matched physical descriptions, and his wife said that his deathbed con confession was, I am Dan Cooper. 
However, the DNA did not match any of the objects, such as the cigarette butts, hair samples, or the DNA on the tie. Cooper had a receding hairline, which Dwayne Weber did not, and he was, he was described by numerous people that he was a compulsive liar. A quote from Lemino's docuseries said, these four suspects look nothing alike, yet any of them could be D.B. Cooper. Was Cooper really in his 40s, or did he simply look old for his age? Did Cooper serve in the military? Which sketch most resembles the hijacker, and did he even survive? I think the last question we have is if he did survive, D.B. Cooper, who are you and where did you go?